Hi, I'm So Yoon. I'm a multidisciplinary artist from a community-based studio RGB Dog. A volumetric interviews is to introduce creatives building wonderful communities by exploring the positive use of technology. This interview project is uh, experimentation. We explored a medium, which is a volumetric capturing technology to push the boundaries between reality and digitality. So we have our first guest, his name is Thorvald van den Acker. Hello Thorvald. Hello Soy. thanks for having me. Thanks for having us here at his mom's place. Yeah, my mom's place. <laughs> Where is this city? We're in uh, Sutemir right now mm -hmm. and um, this is the house I grew up in, which you can see is a very <laughs> stimulating environment. It's quite crazy environment you might see in the video. <laughs> also the 3D. Yeah, can't <laughs> wait to see. I would like to shortly introduce Thorwald. Uh, Thorwald van den Acker is uh, based in The Hague in the Netherlands. Yes. He's a co-founder of an independent record label called Bitbird. Um, also, he's a chief creative officer. Um, Bitbird has a very supportive on and offline community. Uh, it's formed around the slogan called Create Forever, which grew into Create Together. So they have such an autonomous ecosystem uh, within the community where people feel safe and uh, creative. Yeah. And they are brought together by their passion for music. So I'm very inspired by this interesting approach from a music label as a community and how they engage technology for their practice and then for their fans. So let's hear more about them from Thorwald. Could you introduce a little bit about yourself and your company Bitbird? Sure, um, I'm Thorwald, uh, born and raised in the Netherlands, always been passionate about music. I used to sing a lot as a child. Um, Abandoned music a little bit, started studying uh, graphic design. Um, had a bunch of jobs after that, until a friend of mine asked me to help him with his music project. And due to that, really rolled back into the music uh, industry. Mm -hmm. um, kind of accidentally, with my friend, started the music label, Bitbird, and uh, here we are today. <laughs> so your friend is who? My friend is uh, Sander, Sander van Dijk, and he started a music project called San Holo. So what is Bitbird? What do you do? Bitbird is, uh, I always like to say, a creative company. Mm -hmm. It's mostly a record label at the moment. Um, we release with small niche artists in the electronic music scene, um, but it's kind of fringing electronic and uh, indie music a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I know that you started from almost nothing. How did you start a label, like practically? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like this story actually. Um, so my friend Sander, who was working on this project, he, um, he made some music that he didn't really want to put out under his main uh, artist project. Um, but he did want to do something with it, something mm -hmm. something larger, right? But um, nobody really wanted to have the music. He shopped with a lot of labels, but there seemed to be no interest in the project. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was absolutely amazing music. It was um, electronic, but um, sort of set up in a classical uh, ar arrangement, classical compositions. and. Um, we thought we just had to do something with it, so we just decided to make our own page for it, um, create create art around the EP that we thought we were going to release, um, worked on it, out of that grew the name Bitbird, also our logo, etc. was kind of born while working on that EP project, until we released a couple songs that got traction, and people started to send us music, mm. um, which was something that we didn't really uh, anticipate it on, you know. Um, but some songs came in and they were so good that we thought, 
why don't we just upload it to our page? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was the first start that we uh, really started thinking about creating a music label. I see. So it sounds like you just started for fun, basically, yeah. almost. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. 100%. And then um, you grew with the online communities that people just started to send you some music. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it was just a surprise to us, basically. Because mm -hmm. um, the intention never was to create a record label. Mm -hmm. The intention was just to create a space for ourselves mm -hmm. that we had enough freedom to do whatever we wanted. Mm -hmm. And. Um, once we started to get other people on board as well, mm -hmm. we realized that we were creating a space where also other people could do a lot of things they couldn't really do uh, elsewhere at mm -hmm. the moment. So which platform specifically, this online platform that you think it's... Great? That was, that's all initiated on SoundCloud. Yeah, for sure. SoundCloud at the time, and I guess always has been, was the only I guess community driven music platform as well mm -hmm. because you could repost, you could comment, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the perfect space to and enjoy music together and talk about it and support other people too. Mm -hmm. So the perfect platform at the time. So it sounds like for me that um, it started from the very small initiative that I think the technological part, which is the online communities and how you spread your music, uh, became something um, bigger than you expected. Yeah. Uh, because we are going to talk about the project uh, deeper a little bit later. Um, they have a lot of projects that are involved uh, with web, also uh, technology, like online and game. And um, I, th I am very inspired by this heartwarming project that you take out of this um, music. So we will dive into that a little bit more. Cool. Um, so what will be your role in the company? Uh, yes. What do you do in the, in the office? Yeah, that's a very good question, <laughs> actually. Um, and my title is Chief Creative Officer, mm -hmm. which is a very big word for some reason. I just like to call myself a creative. It's really wide. It goes from creative strategy for artist projects, really thinking about where they should go as an artist, talk with artists, kind of figure out with them together what, they're, what they want to express, basically. Um, and it can be as small as I'll just make an Instagram story, for example, mm -hmm. um, and everything in between. I also did a, a long time of tour management, mm -hmm. um, which put me in touch with a lot of fans on the ground, basically, around the world. Um, so it's a, it's a super broad. broad job that I have and that I very much enjoy like that too. So let's talk about some Bitbird projects. Cool. Um, that I know there's this one project that I was super... I, I, I got inspired, I got touched, uh, which was wow. uh, one of the Bitbird musicians called Drulu. Drulu, yeah. It's actually uh, the web project and you can write a letter to somebody. Drulu is an amazing act, also Dutch act. Mm -hmm. um, make experimental electronic music. Um, actually find it hard to describe. There's a lot of jazz influences in it too. And what you were talking about was the A Matter of Perspective album campaign, yeah. Um, basically what they did was they wanted to take the fan on the journey with them. So indeed created this web page experience where fans could write letters to each other um, while at the same time being this pre-save campaign. Mm -hmm. So you could input your name, uh, the name of the person you're sending it to and a little story to write on the card and you would pre-save it and your browser basically generates a, a, a image for you, it downloads and you can share it to your socials. Yeah. But the beauty of it was yeah. that there was so much sharing happening of people actually writing letters to each other because it, it, it turned out such a beautiful image of this postcard that was set in this here? perfect 
perfect environment basically um, that really uh, was spot on on what they wanted everything to look like. Um, and I think that the one that was most fun, that I thought was, was very awesome, was that they also had the same principle going on, but for train tickets. Mm -hmm. um, so the web page was basically this ticketing machine um, and you could tell them your, where you were from or where you were traveling from and then your dream location, basically. So the, wherever you wanted to go. So people made up like these fantasies locations or just like uh, some nice, some nice tropical place or whatever. Um, and this was all around the idea of taking everyone on a journey. Mm -hmm. But now the beautiful part of it was that from those people who submitted their information, um, they chose a small group of listeners and they sent them an actual train ticket. Oh. And this, uh, it was going to Eindhoven Central Station. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when the people got there, the Trulu, the artist, was there at the uh, public station piano together with a classical pianist called Analog Deer, Shark Dauma. And they did a little performance there for a very select group of people that used those online train tickets oh. to, uh, to basically support the release. That's so nice. And that's like, yeah, I, I love that kind of stuff because it ties in everything we do technology wise with the web and brings it back to the real world that I think is, uh, is awesome to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's a great project because um, these days people don't write later that much. Exactly. Yeah. You go somewhere, you take your journey and then you when you actually go the journey to the to this train station, it's a surprise that you yeah. meet. There are other very cool online uh, activations that we've done with them because such a large part of the Drulu Act was the art. Mm -hmm. um, so we hosted both real world and online galleries. Mm -hmm. We used the Discord uh, video call part mm -hmm. to showcase a virtual gallery the fan in Discord could go to like the video call room mm -hmm. that we had set up um, for them. There were actually three of them. You could go into different rooms. And in all those rooms, we had a video play, kind of visiting a museum, literally. And everything was narrated by Vincent, the artist of Trulu. Because if you are okay with just being yourself around others, they are inclined to do the same. And if some of them don't, or don't seem to appreciate that from you, you will just move on and leave them be. Some people say you are who you surround yourself with, but you know that that is a two-way street. Are you really doing this? This man wrote like 20 minute stories about every art piece basically. Um, wow. So it was a very long experience and yeah. uh, some people just watched everything. Some people just briefly walked in, walked in for five minutes and yeah. then got out again. Like a real exhibition experience. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I find these projects are quite special because in the large music labels it's uh, they, I, I don't see this sort of things often. Like mm. it's a lot of effort on one project, which is from the artist, and mostly these campaigns are run by, I think, labels yeah. um, in a larger scale. Yeah. And this is also quite um, exceptional because you held this event on Discord. Yeah. Um, so let us talk about more um, about the Discord. Yeah. Because sure. you are a lot of a lot of. Um, community members of Bitbird are on Discord, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And then there was sort of um, shifted from Facebook and Instagram, these large uh, social media platforms oh, to yeah. um, Discord. And how did that happen? Yeah, interesting. I think it had a lot to do with people growing a bit tired of Facebook, if I put it nicely. Um, we have a very large Facebook group as well, mm -hmm. uh, called the Bird's Nest. Um, but you saw a sort of exodus indeed from uh, real activity there, shifting towards Discord. I think it mostly happened amongst people that were very engaged in um, gaming 
And um, once we figured out how much you can do there and how uh, versatile it is, we started to really get into it as well. And the beauty was that people from our community had already built a BitBird Discord server, basically. Oh, autonomously. Um, oh, yeah. So we uh, basically contacted the people running it and uh, asked them if it was okay if we involved ourselves into, I guess, our fan group, mm -hmm. um, which of course they uh, they really liked. And um, ever since that moment, we've been really working together with the already established community mm -hmm. um, to build it out in a way that they also feel comfortable without feeling that we perhaps take too much power over what they have built. The great thing about this, I think, is TPLNet initiative, like very autonomously. Yeah, that's what I also was pleasantly surprised by. And I think that was always our intention as well. Mm -hmm. You just connect with other people through music, share the same taste in music, um, sharing knowledge, even like a lot of our community is also producers. So what are the channels on Discord that it was created by fans? Just chatting, sharing anything, mm -hmm. talking about releases that we do, um, but mostly just they really found a space for themselves to just discuss whatever. So you have a lot of different channels in it, actually. So you mentioned about the gaming, and I know a project that you did with the Minecraft. Yeah. And you yourself is a Minecraft gamer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> there are some really interesting things that happen on Minecraft that really blew my mind absolutely, actually. The first time I saw Minecraft Festival happen, mm -hmm. you're together, you can chat. Mm -hmm. um, you probably have your Discord mic on with your friends so you can talk. You can also just build anything out mm -hmm. of your imagination. Mm -hmm. So this sort of surreal environment that you are in makes it very magical to me. The festival was called Lava Palusa, organized by the amazing people from Open Pit. Mm -hmm. It's a great collective uh, started doing events in Minecraft and they invited a bunch of music labels that were electronic but sort of in a, in a niche. And then I think we had around six artists or something playing there. Mm -hmm. So there was this main there was this main stage that mm -hmm. got built uh, really for the event uh, mm -hmm. where the music part happened, mm -hmm. and then you had the whole world around it. Mm -hmm. um, they opened that up. I think it was around a month before the event started, um, and they said basically you have the space to build anything you like. Uh, as a backstage for your community. So what we did, we went back into Discord where there was a Minecraft uh, channel made in our Discord. So I just asked there like, yo, who is good at building in Minecraft? Mm -hmm. And then I think we had around five people mm -hmm. that uh, showed they were absolutely amazing in it. And then together with them, we went into the server of the Open Pit, uh, mm -hmm. of the Open Pit event. And there we built this incredibly large B dome sort of uh, botanical garden situation with a large tree and birds everywhere. Wow. It was like a bird sanctuary backstage yeah. that uh, that we built together with the fans oh, and that so we cool. walked around in during the during the festival. That's yeah. so cool. Very cool. It's very relevant in this era, especially like a post pandemic. I mean, we, we are still in pandemic at the moment that we really want to bond somewhere yeah but then it's impossible physically yeah so i think it's a nice alternative that you created i think so too i think it's just generally an alternative mm -hmm. i mean an alternative to the flatness of current social media mm -hmm. you know just watching a feed it's just not cutting it anymore yeah you know that people want more depth i guess mm -hmm. so i'm very excited about that actually Okay, talking about meeting people online in the virtual games, I know you have created very interesting um, real-world meetups. meetups. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the bird watching event? Ah, yeah, yeah that's a funny one. Uh, we, yeah, we do a lot of different 
types of meetups with fans actually. It was around National Birth Week, I think it was. Um, so basically every country has this birthday every, uh, every year. And then there's this international thing going on as well. And usually around that time with BitBird, we really want to do something mm -hmm. uh, birdie. So uh, I guess this, this time we, um, that was last year, we decided to go bird spotting during this uh, during the National Bird Week, um, and we invited. A, we just did an open call basically towards our uh, community, like, "Yo, who wants to go bird spotting with us?" And we had a bunch of crew, and uh, a couple artists, and then a bunch of fans showed up, and we met up with this forest uh, ranger. I don't know how to how to call that, uh, but this uh, bird spotter professional. Basically, uh, took us to go bird spotting. Wow, that's yeah. amazing! Yeah, 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 yeah. It and was spot on. <laughs> did you see a lot of birds? A lot of birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I recognize here is like you are very engaged with fans. Yeah. Personally, also, um, the approach that you make with them is very close to each other. I like to do so. Mm -hmm. I like to meet people, talk with people, see what drives them. And then I just love to have these meaningful, more meaningful, I guess, conversations with them. And then one day I got a message from someone in the community. David, shout out David, he's a community leader, very important to us. Yeah. Um, and he said, hey, we created a compilation together. Um, because every year, us as Bitbird, we curate a compilation too. It's called the Goldie and Finch compilation. And it's sort of our, I would always like to call it Sonic Runaway. So we show kind of who we are and what we have in store for the upcoming year. Um, and then the community thought, we're also going to curate a compilation hmm. made with only music that they worked on a specific month. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So beautiful project to do within a community. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent me the comp. It was amazing. It was so good that yeah. I brought it back to the team. I said, we're going to release this. Also, I was so impressed by, by seeing them self-organize mm -hmm. in that way. It really gave me a lot of confidence in what a collab collaborative effort could be. And the compilation got given to us. Mm -hmm. It was already made. Mm -hmm. And then eventually manifested into a huge, in, in, a, in a huge event um, that we did, a live stream event oh, yeah. uh, on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, so you said the Create Together compilation is the second one. Yeah. Is really created by the community, even the design of the cover. Uh, yeah, everything. 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 And uh, how, how did it happen? So with Create Together uh, Volume 1, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it was mostly the music. Mm -hmm. And um, with 2, I wanted to expand it a bit more. I think it's, it's cool. The, to see if we, with every hopefully annual uh, compilation mm -hmm. like this, we can expand it a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so this time we thought, why not open up also the artwork creation for the community? Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't something that we've really done before mm -hmm. e either. I know a lot of amazing visual artists are in the are in the community, but uh, we never really approached it like this. And uh, very surprising results beautiful um, but to create it um, i have to speak a little bit about the create together month that we organized um, basically every year we do a full month of creating together um, and that consists of multiple live streams that are sort of master classes from our artists um, Topics mostly about music now, mm -hmm. sort of music theory, so you can discuss uh, 
arrangement. Uh, some of them are a bit more technical, like how to properly mix and master. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of fun. So you organize the master classes for friends um, to take the classes together yeah. and then discuss yeah. about it. Yeah. Lots of times it's a case that if people want to start something in art or in music, um, especially also technology, mm. um, it's often the case that they don't know how. Yeah. Like they don't know how to it's get a big it started. Problem, yeah. For that reason, to point people in the right direction, it's on the music end, they received this downloadable package that mm. contained, um, like we have a little uh, Chirp sound logo mm -hmm. so that they could use. Yeah. And then on the art side, mm -hmm. we just provided them with a bunch of like Photoshop templates that had the logos of our, of our label in it that they could use on their artworks. Mm -hmm. And then people started requesting some more elements to be added to the package, for example, um, 3D objects. Oh. So we had the scenery that um, that was in there as well. Yeah. There was this bird with a, a little surrounding that people could get started with basically to create something. So it was like a visual assets that they can they can do anything with it. Yeah. So basically we keep in mind some people they might not know 3D softwares. Mm -hmm. um, they're more of uh, Illustrator for mm -hmm. Photoshop people. So mm -hmm. we have something for them, then we offer something for the more 3D space. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a little kid who made this beautiful 3D... Minecraft bird. Yeah, Minecraft bird. Ah, yeah. here we are again, back in <laughs> Minecraft, right? Yeah, What's we happening? can't get out of Minecraft. Yeah. Oh. Streepjes bij bird. Stenen bij bird. Glaas bij bird. Mushroom bit bird, slime bit bird. So it's quite, you go to all different generations, like even little kids and then um, yeah. like uh, teenagers, yeah. also 20s. Oh, way older than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like that age span is quite large. Mm -hmm. Create together two artwork uh, folding um, was won by two biologists microbiologists who um, recently started to draw birds in the like the super biology type way um, so yeah exposing people to something that is outside of their normal i guess uh, boundaries yeah, yeah exactly is uh, can can have very surprising uh, surprising results because we never knew we we're gonna start a music label mm -hmm. I still don't really know if we ever did. You know, we started releasing music. That's mm -hmm. what I always like to think. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like we started a creative company with a strong focus to music mm -hmm. or strong love for music and seeing how that connects. Mm -hmm. And surround that whole principle, we start to do things. Before this, I didn't work in music at all. Mm -hmm. I had very little understanding. Basically, all of us had very little understanding about music business. Oh, so you are not educated for that? No, no, no. So we just step by step learned more about it. And really by just doing it mm -hmm. and just diving into it yeah. and feel here and there. Yeah. Of course, we learned more and more how to do it. And this is currently still kind of the approach. We just go at it, feel. <laughs> and then make the next thing a little bit better, you know? And uh, most of all, like, I enjoy it as much as possible. I think it's really good to hear because um, often it is the case that um, you don't know how to start because you haven't learned it. Yeah. But yeah. it is important to just do it without much expectation on it. Yeah. Because yeah. you are not going to make something completely polished like other companies do. Mm -hmm but you will start something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that too. Of course there's balance, right? Because mm -hmm. there are expectations mm -hmm. to be met. Mm -hmm. You work with other people, mm -hmm. you know, you're still a company. Mm -hmm. There's also a team mm -hmm. that needs to get paid, mm -hmm. etc. Like just these very businessy things. Mm -hmm. As much as you like to deny them, they're still there. You know, it can't always be just playing around, of course. Yeah. But if it wasn't for the playing around and doing all these cool things, I don't know why I would do, do it, you know? This is what drives me mm -hmm. and the rest of the team as well. They're all very passionate people mm -hmm. about just doing a, a very cool things. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, I, watching you making music videos and stuff, also mm -hmm. you try to make yourself very resourceful because it's not like million dollar production that you no, can do. No. So you have to find a way that it's also resonating with uh, audience and yeah. also at the same time you are happy with the result. Yeah. Um, so, so for this matter, um, I, I believe that there must be some strategies in terms of use of technology that they use in your company. Yeah. I think for a small team, automation is key. Mm -hmm. Like, you literally try to automate anything. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just also about efficiently using sort of project management tools mm -hmm. to get keep everything under control. Yeah. For the community, for example, we use bots that mm -hmm. help us too. So bots, they, you can uh, approve roles with, mm -hmm. people kind of level up in the community mm -hmm. by participating in it, mm -hmm. giving them a bit more access, mm -hmm. a bit more ownership, I would yeah. say, in what the community can do. Yeah, since it's a small team, that how many people are in your team now? I think we have uh, eight people now. Eight people. Yeah. Yes. I will say quite smaller than other big labels. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be important for you to really save some time for like yeah. the projects that you have to do it and these little things on the way that you have to solve yeah. it can be done by um, finding out which technology would suit for yeah. this. Yeah. Financial struggle or struggle, mm -hmm. I think it's just always a thing, of course impact how we build the team and the infrastructure mm -hmm. then it would impact our curation once you went from passion to it being a company and you build something larger you tend to indeed focus on the money mm -hmm. coming in mm -hmm. and then you start to change your curation mm -hmm. to get in more money yeah right mm -hmm. and then your community might lose touch with your project and that's a constant balance you have to do. So it's the challenge to find that balance. Yeah. Yeah. I know that your uh, Bitbird is doing sort of incubating uh, yeah. artists. Yeah, I think all, all the artists deserve to earn a lot of money, I think. Um, yes. And that's why we started as well to make that a more pleasant experience, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas the traditional label, a lot of times they pay artists, they send artist royalty statements maybe once every half year, mm -hmm. sometimes even yearly. What does it mean then? It means that you earn money one time a year or twice a year as an artist from your label, oh. right? So mm -hmm. how are you going to pay your rent mm -hmm. if your next statement you'll get in is in like five months, mm -hmm. right? And. Um, from the start on, we worked really hard on getting monthly royalty accounting in. Mm -hmm. And that's what we worked hardest on, I think, at the start, mm -hmm. to really figure that out mm -hmm. and really figure out where all the uh, income streams come from and collect it all properly for the artist and pay them monthly. Because our vision has always been, as soon as you can pay your rent from your art, that's such a weight off your shoulders. Incredible. So. I think because we are artists ourselves, or mm -hmm. artists grown label, mm -hmm. that we really had that uh, realization. Like this is one of the first things we need to get in check, mm -hmm. right? So uh, besides very uh, progressive contracts with the artists. Wow. Yeah. So I hear that, of course, there are like balance difficulties, yeah. um, but despite that, um, is there the reason why you keep up this community project, which is not necessarily um, like directly making financial profit? Yes. Yeah. Because, and then again, go back to the start. Yeah. Uh, it's just what we started it for. Mm -hmm. Create the space where you're free enough to do what you want mm -hmm. in some way. Of course, with advice and with, with balance, everything needs balance. But we've always wanted to just create something where other people also got stimulated to do something cool. Mm -hmm. And um, 
motivate them basically to create something. It doesn't really matter what, it doesn't matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always built this, like that's also the slogan, create forever, mm -hmm. um, to build a platform that pushes people to create something for themselves as well. Because and, uh, that's how you started with your small group of your friends. Exactly. Having the studio exactly. together. And, that, and, the, and the whole thing that, that just grew out to be something bigger never changed the reason, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we go so hard in balancing these things and do these way too large projects at times mm -hmm. that uh, um, are just pure passion, really. Yeah. Yeah, understanding also this like characteristic of this community project, I am pretty sure you yourself also gets a lot of inspiration out of your community yeah. and people are doing stuff and you get energy yeah. of it. And then maybe that also fuels your work to keep going. 100%. Yeah. I I really understand as yeah. well. So there are various of the projects that you're working on, but the common thing of these projects are you work on the community. Yeah. Uh, why do you think this is important and what is the motto of it? I think it's important to build community because I think it's the most direct um, and most honest feedback you can get. You can throw a lot of uh, money on something and buy a lot of advertisement. Mm -hmm. That is one way to get a lot of traction mm -hmm. on projects. But then what you notice is there are also artists that have amazing streaming numbers or hits. Mm -hmm. Harder time to get people to a venue to actually see them perform, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then in my mind, I think what's more, what's more uh, genuine? And it is the artists that are able to build a community around them of actually engaged people. Mm -hmm. And what you see often is that then the, the, the balance is different than from the artists that can just basically pay the play, right? Mm -hmm. So I think building community is um, keeping you engaged, mm -hmm. keeps you with the feet on the ground, mm -hmm. and also it's just a very direct feedback loop. Like, are you doing something that adds value to other people's lives, yes or no? And if it's yes, community will happen. That's what I think. And that's what you think that is important yes. for you. Yeah. Very important. For everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was great to um, hear what you believe in uh, in the community, since I'm also very interested in how technology can help uh, people to bond together. This is, this is why I started this project, Volumetric Interviews, to introduce uh, bonding and positive, encouraging technology. Awesome. And Bitbird was a very good example of that. I'm very glad that we shared these examples of a project, beautiful project that you did with your artist. And I hope um, this continues. Th this continues. <laughs> this continues further that a lot of people could really get inspired and share with each other's creations and create something new together. So it was a very valuable time for everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, as well. Thank you, Torvald, for today. Awesome, thank you so much. And um, I really appreciate uh, that I could speak here about these uh, cool topics. And uh, also that we're in this crazy experimental uh, setup. Um, very cool to see. And, uh, also really inspiring to me. So uh, I can't wait what, uh, what y'all are up to, to see what y'all are up to. So speaking of that, there is a little hidden message that the world wrote. The world is going to speak yeah. in the AR. So you can open it on your phone and you can find it in the de description how to open that. And it's going to last only for a month. So please uh, be quick if you are curious. Uh, so that was our first guest. Dorwal, thank you. Sorry, thank you. We are also learning and experimenting with technology. Um, every episode will be a challenge for us. So we will have different aesthetics, different tryouts, different um, technology. So uh, please consider following RGB Docs Instagram if you are curious about our next episodes. Also keep an eye on Korea's YouTube for the next episodes. Thank you very much for joining us today and I will see you next time. Thank you.
Tschüss.